All right, three of perdition. So the game plan is discard three, cauldron three onto small creature, exchange toughness, preferably also fling. Have my opponent die. That's the plan. From what I understood, Marvin is only good versus graveyard hate. Well, this, so this is a chance for Marvin to prove you wrong. But it's it's graveyard hate. Plus, it's also like sometimes you will draw a tree and you can play the tree out with Marvin in play. Which kind of forces your opponent to kill you or Marvin, right? Which with they will, then you have a useless tree in play. Like Kurba deck. Could take their creativity, but it doesn't do anything. If I take their helix, they then my Marvin lives. And my Fable token. I have two fault seasons for two creativities, so. Could take them both and not worry about that angle. They are so far away from casting that. Like, will they cast it ever? Maybe I can commit the second Fotsies to my Fable to just ditch it. Let's go, Marvin. Murderous Mimic. Marvin in Graveyard, helping with Delirium as well. Oh, so that's why it's played. It's for FOMO Delirium. Assuredly. Makes perfect sense. It is possible that Marvin would be better as a discard outlet. Or literally anything else. Caretakers, I barely knew her. Okay, so now we have to think, what do we ditch? I think Fatal Push is not really what I want. I think Thought Seize is maybe worthwhile. Harvester. Push a creativity target. I could save push for that, but they don't have any. Well, they have a Caretaker's talent, so... They could try to fountain port, make fish, and then creativity a fish. Thrill Seeker might be better in my graveyard. Not really, not sure with Marvin in play. Thrill Seeker can answer the fish. I don't want to push. Pots is to like make so that they can sweep me on five with a random sunfall. Harvester to dig deeper. Keep Fotsy's Thrill Seeker. Play Frill Seeker on Marvin, most likely. Attack for 6. Next turn I can attack for four, 5, 6, 7 and kill my opponent. They don't do anything, so Thought Seizing seems good. Okay, so I think it's this. Ooh, Mutavolt. That's even get better. So let's fall seize now. Okay, I have nothing. Better to put Candace on Marvin because it can this sacrifice itself. So Kenzan is good. Yeah, yeah. I guess it draws them a card and it buys them a turn of living, so it's actually not too bad. They need to... Steady pinch, share them ocean. They need to jump once. Though, so it's fine. Tru tu, tru tu, tu. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm.
the thrill seeker cannot attack because it doesn't want to trade because it takes away the ability from Marvin to deal four damage. <laughs> You have the ability of Kiki Jiki as well. Holy shit, that's true. I copied the Thrill Seeker. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think it was lethal. Like this, if I stun fall, that's gonna bring them to one. But I mean, they'll die to the battlefield four, just that's what, that's what I mean. Copy Thrill Seeker, counters on token, shoot both tokens with Thrill Seekers. If I suck both Thrill Seekers, then Marvin no longer has the ability to sacrifice itself. So that doesn't work. Because I can kill the blockers, deal the damage, but then my opponent lives. I think my opponent is a Sunfall deck, so Obi's Nixili seems well suited for the matchup. They might also be a Rip in Peace matchup, so we can bring in Withering Thormund. It is tapped, so you can shoot opponents before sucking Thrill Seekers. Oh, that's true, I can suck the Marvin. And the creature still keeps the ability because it's been buck, buck upped, bucked up. Damn. In that case, we did miss lethal. Opponent creativity is into the big dinosaur, man. Well, push seems kind of ass. Token gains ability from backup, giving Marvin the ability. So, for even more reason to not worry about that. So not much removal. That should be fine. Like removal against creativity seems like a losing strat. Probably want to cut an expensive card, so a thrill seeker or a three. Got a tree as it's worse to draw if my opponent's recipes. And it's a white control deck that doesn't use their graveyard, so I'm guessing. Damn, Foxy's Harvester, Fable, and then Random Cauldron. So, chat, was Marvin impressive last game or not? Discuss. High noon. Okay. High noon is kinda okay against discard spells, but really, it's not too big of an issue. Take the creativity. Villain will helix all of my monsters, but I'll just play Harvester into Fable. So called two for one. Could play Obis Nexilis, but I'll just play the Fable now that we have the tree to ditch. High Noon stops the casualty from Ob Nixilis. You sure about that, buddy? It actually does not stop it. High Noon, each player can't cast more than one spell. 
Casualty, as you cast this spell, you may copy it by sacrificing the monster. Let's ditch three and the other. Will they let me attack? They play all business, he's copying the... Copying it? No. I shouldn't. They can hail XD. Extra Albus. Hmm. Make Devil. Helix. Uh, okay, <laughs> now you Helix this. Sure. I have Giganta in my deck, so let's play the Black Cleave Cliffs. Next turn, I can Soul Cauldron 3 to bring my opponent to 2 life. I still have a get lost. Well, that's kind of free to wait. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah I guess that play was no downside. It's, I guess it's better for them because now I have the real Obnix list, so if I play another one, it's better for them. Play out Cauldron. Sounds good. This does not hit an artifact. So there is no danger of of that mattering. Maybe I grab Giganta. Seems like the treasure of value is pretty low against uh high noon. No landsman can't play. Sad. So if I cauldron my devil now, should all work out fine. So this devil is going to have 23 points of toughness. Flicker of Hacking Fate entered their exile zone, but seems like they actually punished me with March of other Wally Light, so I actually got punished. I even exiled a tree, so it's really sad. Giga punished. Oh, Marvin murders Mimic. Why is tree a plant and not a tree folk? Well, it's not a living tree, it's a plant. As defender, because it can't move, it can't attack. Well, I must come out of Terras. Oh, cool, now I'll try mom. Well, I have a lot of combats, but I don't know if I can play it out correctly. Let's try. It might be better to go minus and play under Obis Nexilis this turn. But it's more fun to play fear. Missing out. Discard. Marvin to have an artifact, I guess, is necessary. Copy. Discard Fotsis because I'll never be able to cast it. Now I attack. I don't have that many combats, bro. Actually. Just attack once again for two damage. This is not as impressive as I thought at first. It seems much worse than. I guess not a fable copy, but then I still attack. Well, I guess twice more. Fair. Overlord of the Mist Moves. This is their creativity target. So you have Flicker of Fate, Overlord of the Mist Moves. Wow. That is what I said, yeah. I would need to discard another card, and I don't know which one, so. Overall. Right, let's try again. 
think now it's gonna be kind of sick. Oh no, they have a removal, so it's not gonna be sick at all. Best Polish player. Ever. Because we did know about this sliding helix. Get lost rather. Helix isn't lost. Get lost. Being in my opponent's hand, so... The proper way to play this game was to just sit there with Cauldron forever, never do anything, never ever click a single card. Any Polish players competing at Worlds this year? Alan? I think that's it. Maybe someone else is competing, but I don't. I don't think Saduva is. What is he? <sighs> Only you. Where is Worlds? Good luck. Well, I a few discard spells away from treeing my opponent of per perdition. Manifold Mouse, Ember Heart Challenger, Push 2. Let's take the Kumano, seems like a big deal to remove it. If Lil was this weekend, what would you register? Like one day ago? I would register. Something. I don't know. Phoenix Incarnation. One of those two. Chosen at random. Potsies is good. Infuriate. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Phoenix at RC equals PT for you, so easy choice, I agree. Yet. I am struggling. Maybe I should play the tree next turn as it as a 13 toughness blocker and like that's just gonna stop them on the other hand enigmatic Pol polish player playing enigmatic in lil rnrc also has a 100 percent conversion rate to the pt so you know tough choice close call is being Polish an unfair advantage in magic? I guess. I don't know. Probably not. Realistically. Probably not. But if you tell yourself it is, then that's gonna build up your spirit and it actually will be. Manifold Mouse is kind of crazy. The fact that people actually are playing it. Over Slickshot Show Off.
Rockface Village looking really poor here. So what do I do? Discard 3, drop my pen to 3, die. Sounds poor. Play Harvester, kill the Challenger, discard 3, put a counter on Harvester. Hardcasting 3 would be an option if not for the Manifold Mouse. Double Strike plus Infuriate, they just beat the 3. I think casting the 3 is a bit too poor. It's also not a free 18 blocker, where, where do we get the extra 5 toughness? I think I like killing my opponent's monster because it seems like my opponent then doesn't have good plays next turn. I have Infuriate, Sockens and Mouse. I get to join new guard. When you tapped Harvester to 3 during their turn, holy shit. That's insane. Well, they have failed pushing their deck, so maybe that's, how, that's a way to beat the blocker. <sighs> But I think your stats were wrong still, like 3, 18, it's gonna be like, way different. I guess the mouse is a problem next turn still. But if I block and swap then it's not a 318 blocker it's different the trail seeker wins yeah well do i look like i have one It's going to be 18, because they have 18 life points. I got it now. Took me a while. For some reason I thought this creature's toughness will become 13, because that's the toughness of the Tree of Perdition. <laughs> I was sure it's gonna be 13, but then it wouldn't be 13, but instead 14, because of the plus one plus one counter. Okay. C419 They have a charm blocker, they can live Oh wow They have seconds and still True, we know their card Let's force the charm block And then play Giganta Today I'm not the best about playing around cards, known cards in hand. Many, many such cases where I had a card revealed, seen it, but ignored it. Emberheart Challenger, that's the best top deck. They use the Rockface Village now. What did they flip? Hardfire Hero. Solid.
Do I want to count it on Giganta? I don't think so. Maybe. This deck should play Grizzlebrand. No, Kurva, I'm going to. Finally. We soak and we found. We soak our frills, then we found them. Let's board in four one mana creature removal spells and one two mana creature removal spell. Over for over duress, keep Fotsies. Cat Marvin for being weak. Triumph. I would rather have Fotsies and Triumph. Can cut a Cauldron. Like, I probably want as many real cards as I can. Against a matchup like this. Because I'll just beat them with removal fable. Have so much removal. How's that do mega dobre? Opie, Hazoret, to jest babeczka. Co uważaj, jak mówisz. I think no Hazoret. Well, let's move again like a reasonable adult. I have red red cost in my deck. I don't have Giganta. Hmm. Guess more black. Which plus potsy sounds more pushing. Chłopie, kurwa, co to jest? Dla kumana zagrywać. Do I want to triumph on the next turn? I'll try to take the creature. Play Muta Vault. I want to play the monster rage, that's actually fine with me. Bitter triumph looking kind of poor here. A nice card, well, like nicely balanced. The free life does cost you against aggro. Let's play the real sick air. Hopefully, I'm going to use fear of missing out when once I have no cards in hand to make it into a two mana rogue refiner. We have failed. Alright, form of discard crypt. Nice. Kami of, of the Crescent Moon. I don't want to attack. Dealing damage to my opponent is bad because my next turn play is likely going to be the Tree of Perdition which will switch with my opponent's life total. So I want my opponent's life total to be as high as it can be. FOMO died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
manifold mouse is so much better than select shot show of that. Mm, why did you dislike the play of play crypt plus by giganta? It would require me to tap out. Doesn't seem like something I would like to do. According to my calculations. Or you wanted me not to play the FOMO instead? It's a play that may make sense, I did not think of it much. It would save my FOMO for later to discard something I actually want to discard, I guess. Arguably. What OPF album is this from? Good question. I don't know. It's titled Harvest, so probably it's from the album Harvest. If such an album exists. With every passing day, Red Black Prowess seems less and less scary. Decks do adapt, I guess, around it, and Red Black Prowess adapts around itself to include Manifold Mouse over Slickshot Show Off, and then it becomes worse too. Deal 7 20 Toughness Life of Pierre Edition. I think I should be able to attack. Maybe my opponent does something funny and punishes me for the attack, but seems uh, not super likely. The hairs maybe. Being a 4-4. Which I should be able to push if my opponent hairs And tries to block with it. And I think dealing damage to them sounds... <sighs> Let's say it frankly, valuable. Wait, it has no fresh it has no level strike right now. Whoops. Yeah, that's fine. But somehow in my head this had double strike the entire time, but it actually doesn't. It only grants double strike. No idea how this not having double strike is relevant, so I'll, I thought I'll have another priority pass. Which I wanted to use. And then consider pushing the Kumano. Or rather not Kumano, the other one. The rat afterwards. That doesn't make sense though. This will be challenging. I agree, Ardos. That's just hacking crazy. A bit problematic that my opponent has still a bunch of spells in hand and I don't have any. Fable? Hmm. The house is problematic more so by the fact of just being a large creature rather than for its graveyard hating qualities, but... Fable? Ugh. 
Dobra, dajemy kurwa do 3 HP na S. -ie. Take Giganta and let's pretend I have two fail bushes. Maybe my opponent will believe me. Taking Giganta is something that a person who has a lot of fail pushes in hand would do. Then is a problem. I guess even a single fail push lets me survive, so. Dobra, dajemy coś teraz dobrego. No, to jest kurwa aucik. One of my removals is a go for the throat, so... That might be a problem. Need to keep up the fail push. I guess Giganta keeps up the fail push, so I probably shouldn't have played land. Damn. But would my opponent believe it? Because it's easy to miss that Giganta can cast fail push, so they probably would miss it too. So it's good to actually show the land untapped. Hazard, holy fuck. Holy shit. They're letting me still be in the game. Not attacking with the unlicensed hairs a bit wild. I need my opponent to, well, it's impossible for them to screw this badly to lose now. Fountain port. Well, I wish I had drew it earlier. Could be useful. Yeah, FOMO does draw a card with an empty hand, it's crazy. I draw push now. Dobra, we drew the push. Then, I guess I'm fine. Unless they play their sixth land and discard two cards to Hairs to Shouldred, Hazard, Shouldred, Hazard, Hairs, same thing. Should have played a Tree of Redemption. Sure. Manifold Mask, that's probably one of the. Well, it's threatening. If they attack with the hairs, finally. I don't know if they know that hairs can attack. I mean, they somehow chose a line. I guess they're still playing around push. But I'm fine as in that I survive, right? Chandra's defeat. Alright, you know what?
What if? Dura is better than Ob. Maybe better than Tree. Ob is my life gain. Ob seems sus in this deck in general. It seems pretty good against control. Dva Oby. Oba Oby. Any chance I should keep this? Probably shouldn't. I guess Ob against the monster. Ross is, uh, let's say, exquisite. We drew a push, we are saved. Let's take the show off. We will play a Swiss spear for the counter. One day. Okay. Minus one life point. Now I can filter the obs away. What happened? Monstrous Rage. What happened? Okay. Could discard two orbs. I think keeping an, an orb to start gaining life is, sounds pretty good though. Could discard four more. Although well, playing four more as a blocker seems not too bad. Putting more cards in the graveyard against hairs is maybe not ideal. Don't really want to play a fable now. So I guess four more. Well, would I rather have fable or orb? Say orb. Ooh, fountain port. Oh, but I mean, that's two fountain port for value. Value, you can actually sacrifice your obnixilis token to, to fountain port char. It's crazy. This blocks both, both of the creatures, so I get to block and then hold up removal. Hers plus Cell Sword is a little bit of a combo. But Life Gain is gonna help with that. Blocks Bofa. What's Bofa? Can suffer with push, I know, but it's still fairly annoying. Grab Giganta. Okay, let's defeat the Swift Spear. Do I think the Acererak deck is worth testing more? Certainly. Certainly worth hard testing. Attack, if they want to block with Hairs, I'll push it. And now we play our Postport technology, which would be weak to hers, but isn't. It's just weak overall. Thanks to the swap. Obnixil is the anniversary. That said, f gaining 4 life per turn, it's gonna be no joke. Or even making some devils and then gaining life. Also, I have Harvester Fable to take care of the eventual giganta and everything my opponent plays so i just have to avoid foxies fling the hairs and then we're good or use obnixilis to out life gain that before we need to but yeah the acerarak deck certainly worth hard testing Oh, this is annoying because the devil doesn't die. No, no, bro. I jump. I'll make a new devil next turn. 
This way I can keep my reflection and go harvester, copy harvester. Keep up push the entire time. Edgings of Kumano. Create the devil. Who is in the details? Use Obis Nexilis to gain two life. But as God's orchestra feed better as. Wow. Ale to jest współpraca. Every time I see Obnixilis it's good. It might be main deckable. Have you thought about the fact that you see Obnixilis when it's being brought into the deck? So, kind of, more often than not, it's gonna enter the deck in matchups where it's better, more so than worse. So, yeah. Com, do you think one or two main deck overlord of the Balemur could be consideration for this deck? Maybe. The overlords are overall pretty pretty solid. They seem almost like pioneer cards. Not even that good in general. And this matchup still looks good. I guess that's fair. I did not bring Obnixilis in this matchup because I actually wanted Obnixilis specifically more so that I wanted to board out the trees to just have any mid-range cards that's going to supplement my pile of removal against red black aggro plus hearses didn't want to be weak to graveyard hate mountain tokenzan on the other hand cauldron tree hmm. that's mulligan oh should I keep this? I have a Surbi land. No Kahira, so not afraid of Field of Ruin, but... Well, it's not clear that it's even good. It is a spell. Whoa, Phoenix. I have not seen Phoenix in a while. Consider. Only Fable can save us. If I draw a spell every turn of the game, it's actually going to be great. If I draw a Fable, it's going to be Giga Great Max. Got a uh, artist talent. Hmm. Say Fabled. Great card. It would be neat if the artist talent also did something besides the initial chapter, if it actually had chapters that do have an effect on the game. What if you had some burn in the deck too? Like if, it, if Fire Impulse went face chat, the Phoenix deck would be unstoppable. It's crazy how but not going faces in the deck. Next turn, Giganta is entering the battlefield chat, so I'm virtually not flooded. 
Dobra, myk Feniksika. No giganti mode, you say? Giganta. Elk. It's not that simple. Ochulos in Phoenix. I think Ochulos is pretty nice. Like it doesn't seem bad to play. It's really good against high noon. I wouldn't mind playing a copy or two. Basically, like let's say you just skip picklock prankster. Eight cards in hand for our opponent. Prof's idiotic memory has a you have no maximum hand size. Uh, line. I was surprised the last time I played against Phoenix too. But you have no maximum hand size, got me pretty good. Honestly, Phoenix is just probably insane. Because... The only problem matchup for Phoenix really ever was the Gregor Trespasser deck that was just unbeatable, no matter how much you tried. So, like, there's no one to beat Phoenix except for Hainun, I guess. But it is unreasonable to play main deck Hainun, because not enough people feasibly can play Phoenix. And aggro, and it's not as like just you know, it's not reasonable to play many high, it just simply isn't. So, most of the main deck high should get filtered out. Not in enigmatic, I think it is terrible in enigmatic after playing a bunch with it. Main deck, it's so bad. I lost plenty to random decks for having high in my hand. John Sack is an amazing matchup for Phoenix versus Phoenix. They have few ways to interact, sure. People will still play it. Well, not necessarily. There's less of it already. I thought you were a theory first. But seems like you're still bound to the percentage charts. Also, this person is playing Ochulus, probably just one or two copies, which Ochulus seems pretty neat. Add solving. High noon a little bit. And like you have all the Anu, like all the Anuls, present borrowers. It's not too bad. Yeah, claim to f claim claim the first one like has no good matchups. I don't know why it's in the index. It's crazy to me. I have no idea. My deck has no graveyard height whatsoever. I guess it has the four cauldrons. <sighs> Creativity transmog decks are probably the better position right now. Better than what? Serious people are scared of Phoenix and will still play it even if it's bad. I think if you play two leagues before playing your RC, you'll cut Manic High Noons. I play John Suck and I replace all these flex slots with target removal that can answer creatures or planeswalkers because one of the worst John matchups are blue eyed. Okay. No push for Shredder. Not yet, I'm cool, but those decks have like two shredders nowadays. 
or not at all. We have the Ochulus in their deck, that we know for sure, but not the RC decks here, no. But the push for Shredder is always so silly. All the lists on Mona still are on for Shredder, so who knows. But those are also no artist talent lists, so not what my opponent is playing. There's four artist talent, two Ledger Shredder. I don't know about the Hazard, but it's kind of hard for them to answer. I'm gonna play too. I want for this more discard and removal. With Artist Talent, they could maybe get away with Temporal Mastery again. Some of those decks have main sideboards, Tassa's Oracle Bros. It's this. This is actually even better than the Time Walk, I think. Although it's like a cyber tech. Shredder is so good versus aggro. That is true. It's okay if it gets to block. What do I think about the mono blue Belcher decks in modern? I think they're kind of shitty. I was not sure, but then I asked Ardoshik and Sodek. Well, I guess just Ardoshik and. Ardoshik said that he played a league with the deck, with Sodek, or some games with this deck, alongside Sodek, and the deck is unplayable. It just dies because it takes too much damage from your from its own lands. Sometimes you don't draw Belcher, sometimes you don't draw Lotus Bloom. Sometimes you play against Boseju. And sometimes you play against something that's not Amulet Titan, so you can cheese it with your main deck and if possible they full place it of stupid uh with stupid card like Harbinger of the Seas. So that's what I think about it. What score did we do with green white? I forewarned. The deck f seemed very impressive for how biased I was against green white monsters company to begin with. It seemed to perform pretty well. The creatures combo in nice ways. The Enduring Creature helped a lot for Green White, I think. Well, for sure. Also, Anul in, in this deck is kind of just great. It's a big deal for Phoenix to have Anul. It's much better than Piles of Spell Pierce which go dead after turn 4 and like you go like some of the problem to mana cards just so hard to get them with pierce but Anul just clearly counters them in, spot, in a spot like this I was lucky to have a second soul cauldron so I guess it didn't matter but looked pretty good for them other than that We didn't see Shredder post board. How's that on the draw? Let's have the pushes for their creatures. Tomorrow I'll play Phoenix and Enigmatic. I think I've been thinking about Enigmatic this entire time and I just came to realize that I think there has been a collective self-scamming 
happening namely the black splashless are running this car nowhere to run right and you think damn that's nice and then you think about it a bit harder and you realize it's actually just this the same card and you remember shit i played with woman of the forge in the past and i do not really desire to do that again oh bro but it's minus three minus three and it counters ward okay yeah, not versus Boggles, that's true. Nowhere to run saves you free life against the mouse. Free is huge versus red black. Fuck Chad, you're on coping so hard. Like the fact of the matter is it is the same 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 card. Probably spell peers, so I thought this. Can we play Artist Talent in Enigmatic? Sure. I will not stop you. I'm playing leaks because it's easier to so with a tournament coming up I want to play more decks a lot of decks a little bit try them out at least to have a better picture of what they are capable of and what they are not capable of in my head it's easier to do that when I play leaks because Prelims, you can only play one deck and it takes more time. So, yes. I think Duress Cauldron to take Anul. Anul taken care of. I played a Cauldron Picomer, I should have not done that, I should have attacked first. Oh, it is annoying that the discard spells don't remove the card you have discarded from the revealed card zone now, so it's easy to get confused and think, damn, they still have an Anul. Why pray to the gods who feed on your worship, dissolve your illusions and see the true nature of things? Then I got the Reveler. Well put. <sighs> this anime tree on MTGO? Probably not, otherwise it would be in my deck. Ah, to fullku kurva, ty jesteś taki leciutki, jak piórko. Cruz. Anime tree. Meanwhile, the tree. This card is 16 euros, 13 euros, 16 dollars. The regular one, the jumpstart one is 1 euro more, the weep tax. Trees are to be venerated and protected, dot dot dot, except that one. Damn. It's very nice that I kept fail pushing my deck like you suggested, chat. Kind of feels bad to play a Takenuma, but I will. Make it into a 4 4. You love Phoenix. It is a very strong deck. Damn, you bought them for 7 euros each half a year ago. That's crazy, my friend. Maybe Giganta grabbing was better? I don't think so.
villain correctly identifying that they do have to block No way the menu is Exchange ankle and axe for a stick. It's a Polish proverb that you invoke in moments like that. Strayek is not, not really an ankle, but I don't know if it translates. It's a word for a paternal ankle, so I guess an ankle. Keep up one mana to shoot them if they try to kill it. Probably doesn't make sense and I should have played the cleaves. A 6-6 six, six is unkillable. <laughs> Oh no, another track. I guess Giganta can shoot it. 11 points of power. Jak to po polsku idzie na wymieniu stryjek, siekierkę na kijek? Throw a fish at them. True, I could. Vital push. With fountain port in play, I guess having all the mana is useful. Solid block. Pushing Drake here with fountain treasure. I would rather trade. That way I can draw cards with Fountain Port. Which are going to be better than a 6-6 in play for sure. Well, I can keep push for... Game 4. No, actually I just honestly don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just clicking cards. But I didn't like doing your suggested play for some reason. Prazzle Borrower is so good in the deck when you have artist talent. Do you think this deck should have more Grigard hate for Treasure Cruise in the board? It sure feels like I'm a bit short on that. So, potentially. But like, I don't be damned this Phoenix deck right now, if you have... Oh no, I forgot. I, like, I have sixed. Fuck. That's so bad. <sighs> Whoops. That's Phoenix deck. Now. You can Brazil Borrower into a null on its way back, anything. So just kind of have a solution to all the problems that plague the deck sometimes. That actually sounds good, so... I think Phoenix is kind of insane. Why the token have that? Because of Soul Cauldron. It's not true, but it is what it says.
it's kind of a mangled version of the ability of cauldron it's good They're looking for a cruise. Do I want to Fotsies? I don't think so. Opt one bottom. Is Fountain Port a better Mirex? I think that would be a fair way to describe it. Mirex is pretty one dimensional for a utility land. Axe and my fish. I throw a fish at you, I guess, as. Chad request said many times ago. The full act now. Three of perdition. Maybe next turn I'll foxes myself. I want to have a counter on the Muta Vault so I can fling it if my opponent w wants to kill it. Oh, Arclight Phoenix, that's damage. Hopefully, not a second Phoenix. I can throw the Muta Vault if I need to. Why Coldring at sorcery speed all the time? Well, why instant speed? I guess for the Phoenixes, but here I would prefer to. Do it this way. That's why. I can't potsies myself. Need to kill the phoenix. How hard are LCQs at RCs? Well, Really hard, I don't know how many players they have. But Yendrek qualified to two or three RCs through LCQs. Like every single one that he went to, he was able to. But I like you probably shouldn't expect that it's gonna happen. Was it worth playing the tree so I could sacrifice it? How do I sacrifice the tree? Now they are easy for oh, 25 entry, just play 5. Hmm. But if everyone plays 5, then it doesn't work. Give it a counter. Ooh, that's true. Then it was worth it. No, nie, no, weź się odczep. I don't know what's the, what's the RCQ, LCQ formula now, so I can't say. Point out there with a most pathetic draw ever. What I'm losing to this Brazil borrower. Ay, ay, ay. Out Brazil. Yes, Pink's the best second pioneer. Maybe. Mm. 
imagine they play banger creature for my torture tower and I kill it and they exile it and I can't steal its abilities. Holy guacamole. That's a bogle. <laughs> well, sure. Resolves. How was yesterday's test on Lich Combo? The deck felt really strong. Although it is unplayable on Modo. Which is a problem. But besides being unplayable on Magic Online, it's kind of warrants more paper hard testing if I actually will end up doing that. Or like hard testing against teammates would scoop when you say I have loop but playing it in leagues is tough SRAM I bet I never told you that chat but SRAM actually means I shit in Polish He's a phenomenal control player. War 2 gaming in Lille. Chad, imagine if I had nowhere to run against this opponent. It wouldn't help because their creature was a 5 5 by turn 2 when I could play it, so. A push SRAM. Play FOMO. If you suck nowhere to run to torch. That's too tough for me to answer. I have no idea. If I discard a land, I can actually get Delirium. You gotta get Delirium this way. Yeah, nice. I could also get Delirium by champing. I don't think I'll champ yet if I don't have to. Although there are probably trample tricks in their deck, but I'll hope that I'll dodge them. 8-8. Eight, eight. So I take it. And they don't do anything important. I can simply cauldron kill them. Kinda. Not really, because I lose the Lyrium if I exile the tree. Suck for more to kill both creatures. This has war too. Yeah, it untaps, but it's still good. My thought system have four types. Take their problem card, attack with two FOMOs, they untap each other. Points attacked for four. Five even. And they have four life points. Seems like they're dead to me. Stubby D. Holy guacamole. Actual good music on this channel, what happened? Come back in 10 minutes. Holy guacamole, they died. This was pretty impressive. Both fear of missing out. I guess fear of missing out on the combo did some good work. <sighs> Destroy enchantment. Sign me up. Do res. I guess. Nah, this seems like not good. Not a good idea. Let's cut the Marvins. They are pretty cringe. Maybe eight duresses is a bit of 
a bit a bit too much, but I have stubborn denials. Have to beat that somehow. Music complimenters are not welcome. That's not true. Complimenting is fine, but backhanded compliments are actually the opposite. Did I sell 100 mana crypts? I don't own any mana crypts and I never do any magic card finance. I just buy cards that I want to have and I keep them. I find trying to trade, sell cards and do all of that to be troublesome and not worth the effort and not also not bringing me any joy. That's my official stance. Fear of missing out seems really good for this deck. It's a solid creature. Is fear of missing out better or worse than Blood Tide Harvester? Discuss. Discard. Push. In general. Might be just better in general, like would red would black red midrange with Gregor Trespasser not consider playing FOMO over Blood Tide Harvester? Probably should, like maybe it wouldn't because they would not realize, but it absolutely should, right? Did we not have the Lyrium we sacked through Seeker? Did that grant me lethal? Because I was just planning to have lethal when my opponent plays Giganta. Red Black Mid doesn't have an easy way to make Delirium. Fought Sea Sorcery. Fable, Discard Lens. Enchantment Creature. Got it. You are delirious now. Worst card in Vintage Dredge, in my opinion, in the rank of the worst cards in the deck. I'll keep the same because I'll draw Fable first, draw step. Uh, worst card in Vintage Dredge is... Shambling Shell. It's force of negation, but you need it for blue counts. I get irrationally upset when anyone mentions blue count in Vintage Dredge because you don't actually need a blue count. You is it Grease Fang? Possibly it could be. You need a high blue count in normal decks because you need to pitch your force for it to be useful and in dredge you can, if you don't happen to have a pitch for it, then who cares? Let's discard their Parhelion. Almost. A hit where Sky Sovereign doesn't do anything though, I just lose 6 life. Sorry for rustling your Jimmy scans there. Yeah. Don't ever do that again. I play Voladir and Pharaoh Seeker. I block. 
Oh, your Asfang. Fable and Greasefang. A good card. What's the deal with that? I just realized that Agatha's Soul Cauldron is actually very nice against Greasefang. Asset prevents Greasefang from ever returning a vehicle, so it is a so called 8 card in that matchup. I'm also slightly surprised that they pitched to Sky Sovereigns. How did this deck win the RC? Looks so clunky. I mean, the games look pretty good so far, so maybe that's how. Probably the RC winner drew spells instead of lands in spots like this too, and it's valid. Let's play my swamp for no reason, I probably shouldn't. Hmm. But to me the tree deck seems like a pretty fair deck. Push or a play. That's it. Paul Katzatan Krish. Missing 26 points for a song. Remember that Twitch subscribers earn points at a faster rate. It's funny that the opponent is flooded now with six lands and they discarded both Sky Sovereigns. Like, if they play Sky Sovereign now, wouldn't be too bad, would it? Whoops. No, my Giganta. How do I keep up with your inflation? I wonder that myself. Okay. So what now? I have to discard the vehicle that Grisang is going to try to return, I think. But it's exactly 13 life. Should Grisfang have lethal next turn if creature? Good Grease Fang sounds not so bad, honestly. I somehow did not think of that. He's a phenomenal control player. You're a genius. Yep. No, you know who me move to shoot Grease Fang now. When I had the push. You baited me, chat. How is it lethal next time if we draw a creature? Who knows? But shooting Grisfang was still a good play, like regardless of the hallucinations of this particular Twitch chatter. It was still the thing to possibly do, although maybe not. I don't know, Pro I don't know, I don't know. Because if I exile the Sky Sovereign, I can die. So I could have exiled the Sky Sovereign from the graveyard that doesn't put a plus one plus encounter on my fear of missing out, so it does die. Should have done that Sorcerer Speed, yeah. And then all would have been fine. So my fault. 
Let's bring in Griswang removal. Let's cut Marvin. I think Duress looks pretty bull, pretty, pretty bad. Then they would have top decked Griswang. What I should have done is I should have put a counter on on my FOMO. And then I can kill the Griswang beginning of combat because they don't have enough power to crew. Let's go. It's a bit awkward that this deck doesn't have a single shatter or anything, just has to tank all graveyard height with Tazoret or whatnot. Tinku was a Reduve Yendrula. Keep. Each spindrel is the lingering consciousness of a survivor consumed by a cellar spawn. A ragged, drifting remnant pulsing with constant psychic agony. That sucks. I would hate to suffer such a fate. If I play the cauldron, I can play my Fable freely next turn. Blood Tide Harvester resolves, as they say. Oh, cool, the tree does, Rutsaya. Wait! Oh, I missed a play. I could have exiled this and put a counter on this. Why did they even suck it? I guess they missed a play too. Whoops. I want to remove this creature, not necessarily. But it, this was a bit awkward, certainly. Drill Seeker. What if I torment the fable? Not sure. But certainly if I had the fable token in play, they would have just almost dead now. Her Suva. Dobra, zbieramy Tree of Perdition z grobowca. I haven't seen this hive yet. Kroxa. Ale karty. Damn, nice Grease Funk. So... They know the last card? I don't think so, they played all of them. and died would swap the life points to four and then throw it at them hello George Adam 
I hope you're having a good day. So, Duress stays out. Hazard. I want Hazard, possibly. In a graveyard. Stall. It's not even unkillable. Black Light Harvester exists. Did I ever compete in math contests? I did compete in Kangur once, which is a math contest of sorts in Poland. But I did not win anything, I think. Once or twice, maybe. I think it's French. Then it's surprising that it's called Kangur and not Le Kangahua. Holy shit. Kangur borrowed from French Kanguaru. Actually, OG French word. That's wild. Let's board out a free mana removal spell. It's a bit too expensive. Hazard is gonna show them. You have it in Italy as well. That does sound like it's Europe, -y, Europe wide. Who do you think is favored in the matchup? Adjusting for player death, it has to be me. That's his dangerous hand. Should I take Fable or? Or the hairs. Let's take the hairs and die to the fable. Mm. I mean, the Mardu Grease Fang deck is a pretty bad Grease Fang deck, but it's not a Bad deck, holy shit, bro, stop. Only one combat though. Play upkeep, torch the tower. Ah, pure gem. I guess they don't have chariots, so they have to use the boat. And like the issue of the Mardu deck is that you actually have to draw your Parhelion every single time. To start. So there is some issues in this deck. Requiring us to have our creatures not be summoning sick. Kind of food vibe with playing many more Mutavot. There is only two in the deck. Could you play four? Kind of rough with those the costs in the deck, but maybe. Maybe you could play a few more lands even. Discard Parhelion. Parhiton Mashna Morje. Tip, yeah. Do I loot now? What do I want to draw? I think the fling man. The tree doesn't accomplish anything. Or well, might need second red, but I won't use the Takenuma this game. No, JPL. 
JPL it is. I got absolutely owned by my opponent's Grease Funk deck, which is very, very strong and powerful. I conquered. Three two with three. I think this match was unfortunate and also I misplayed. While this match was unfortunate, but also I misplayed. Overall, the three deck seemed pretty okay. I think the card quality in it has improved since the last time I played it. Except for Marvin. Uh, with FOMO being pretty based. Like this deck used to run Inti though. Ha ha ha.